please join me in giving a warm welcome to Director Marie Kreutzer. And Elizabeth herself, Vicky Creeps. Hello. Thank you both uh, so much for being with us. I'm so thrilled to get to uh, pick both your brains about this film because I, I love it and uh, have only continued to grow in my appreciation for it the more I see it. So uh, I want to dive right in. I think to kick things off, I was hoping you could uh, speak a bit about how this film came to be in terms of uh, the the genesis of your desire to make a film about Empress Elizabeth and and your collaboration. I feel like I can hear myself by now because I'm repeat <laughs> I'm, re I'm, I'm telling this story so often. Um, we we uh, we did a film together before in 2015, which was called We Used to Be Cool. And we wanted to work together again. And at some point, Vicky said to me, why don't we make a film about Sisi? And I just laughed and didn't take it seriously because I grew up in Austria where Sisi is on every other souvenir. And I was just not, she was, she's, to us Austrian, she's not cool or interesting. So I, I really didn't think it was a good idea or I don't know. But it was like her planting a seed and I, I really, I mean, she was everywhere anyway, and then I noticed that even more. And then at some point I decided I would read a book or go to the museum and, and went to the Hofburg. This is where she lived, and this is just 10 minutes from my home, and I could you can walk through the apartment there and really see the rooms. And, um, yeah, I just... I was open to finding something in the material that would resonate with me, but I was not yet sure if I would make a film about her. But then focusing on her in her 30s and 40s, which was also the time I didn't know much about, um, I, I, I read about her, like who, who never really liked being an empress, starting to show what I would call rebellion against the role and against the position. and against all the expectations, and that was something I could relate to and that, that, I, that I thought could also be relatable for an audience today, a woman who doesn't want to meet the expectations anymore. And basically this film is, for me, is about women um, being raised by society to please in order to be loved. And I think that's still the case, and so I thought it was, an, it was a universal story, and that's what made it interesting for me. Thank you. <laughs> Could you just I was talk? listening. Um, I'm just interested in your interest. You <laughs> in heard me <laughs> tell this story and so many I'm times. I'm listening. I know. I'm just interminable. I, that's probably my job. Um, <laughs> what was it about uh, this historical figure that Why I, struck yeah. you as a potential um, character worth exploring? Yeah. Um, I take you all back in time, even more than this. Uh, I'm a child, I have a life, I have two parents and a house, and we had everything that was not princess. You know, my mother taught me to climb on trees and, you know, but not to be a princess. So my neighbors who were watching Sissy movies every Christmas, that was like this, wow, I have to go see, and I saw it, and I loved it, and these beautiful dresses, and it's, it's beautiful. Um, but I think I was always, I always felt um, suspicious of if this too perfect image, you know. And uh, then when I was 15, I read the biography. They had a book, and it was the biography by Brigitte Hamann, is her name. This is the classical biography. And I read it, and I remember reading it, feeling, oh, there's something different. There's something behind the curtain or behind what I'm reading, but I had a very naive approach. I was 15, you know, I didn't really understand the full scope of it, but that's, I think, what it was. And I think also I was relating to it because as a 14-year-old, you know, having grown up uh, freely without clothes in my garden, at some point I hit society in school, and that was 
you know, rather painful because then they teach you that you have to behave and you have to do this, this way. And then when you ask them, why do I have to do this this way? Because well, that's the way we do it. Uh, but why? Well, because we do this since hundreds of years. But why? I mean, you must know this feeling. We all do. And I think that's why I felt at 15 related to a woman who was older than me and I really couldn't relate. But this feeling of oh, someone is putting something onto me without me wanting to and not even telling me why and not even telling me where we are going, but this is where we are going. And and that stayed with me all these years. And in, in arriving in Vienna, like she says, I wasn't used to it, but... I had read this book and I get to Vienna and this poor woman who had never been heard was now uh, selling chocolate, you know, and I was very moved by this in a way and, and we wanted to make a movie and I had just had my, and you reminded me today, I just had my second child, I was breastfeeding and I felt again very struck by faith and being a mother was again one of those mega roles that I had to play and there was a certain way of doing it and not another way and this is how you do and people relate to you suddenly in this role and again it felt you know a little painful to me and um, and I really wanted to work with her so I thought <laughs> I can always try I'm I'm so interested in, in um, the way in which you draw out and develop uh, Elizabeth's personality and her, her build her character into sort of a, three, a real three-dimensional person um, who I think transcends the historical record that um, exists about her. And how, I'm curious both uh, in the sort of research and writing process, but also as, as you were developing your performance, Vicky, how did you go about um, sort of of constructing in your mind's eye this fully formed person who comes across so spectacularly? Um, of course, I read a lot and I went to all these places, but what I recognized quite early was that um, biographies are also an interpretation. Um, I have one book, one book, the book about her that's really just the bare facts and it's this thin. And every biography is like this. So you have to make it into a story. Um, and, and, and that's what, what, I th what I thought kind of freed me from, from trying to do it correctly because I, I, I saw it, was, it, was an inter it would be an interpretation anyway. Um, but um, I tried to know as much as possible. And I, I would say I was surprised by reading about her, knowing these old sissy films, which were made in the 1950s. I don't know if you know it, but Romit, Romy Schneider really, she played Sissy and she really made Sissy popular, also in Austria. She was not popular at her time. Um, and what I discovered when reading about her was so different from what I uh, thought from these films. Um, I discovered a, quite a complex and, and melancholic character and, and, and a very introverted woman also. And, there was so much that I read about her that was um, interesting, and it was the, the most important books were the ones written by uh, the diaries of her daughter, who is also in the film, and the diaries of a lady in waiting, Marie, we, who is also very important in this story, because these were really people who lived with her, and them observing her and writing about her really shaped the character for the for the script. So I was not I was using the facts of the biographies. Um, and I didn't try to make it in any correct way and I didn't try to stay true to everything, but I tried to stay true to what I read about the character and the personality of her. And I tried to make her as complex and um, authentic and, and, and human as, as possible because I think that's what we are still not used to see. I mean, when, whenever I write a script, and most of my scripts are about uh, women, um, I get I get to hear. Well, this is a very good script, but do you think the audience will like her? And that's something that really by now I'm pissed off by. And I, 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 I it has become kind of my mission to bring complex female characters to the audience because we are really not used to seeing complex female characters. 
a male character can pull off a lot before we hate him. And a woman is just not very friendly to her child or her lady in waiting and people will hate her. I mean, that's just not fair. And so I'm, I'm just trying to, I just try to make her as, yeah, um, I, I just try to talk about someone having many different faces like we all have and being without touching that. That was my part. <laughs> Did that, uh, do you find that um, the way you conceived of the character evolved over the course of developing <clears throat> the performance and collaboration between the two of you? Of course. Um, I was just asked today in an interview about that and I said, I told the same story and then a journalist said to me, but why? I mean, I liked her totally. I don't even know what, 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 what you're talking about. And I said, it's also different as soon as there's an actor involved. It's a, per it's a person. It's a, it's a human being. And then it's easier, you know, because when it's just on the page, I, I just don't really know how to describe it. It, it doesn't mean that Vicky didn't do a lot, but I, I'm also saying... As as long as soon as there is a real face, it's different from what you just read, you know. I I think that the difference is that um, um, you know when I at least when I'm doing what I do, and I don't know what I'm doing, I don't know what I'm doing, and because I don't know what I'm doing, it's my most honest and pure self and you know I, and, and that's deeply vulnerable and is right or is wrong I don't know maybe it's wrong what I'm doing I'm not doing it because I know it's right I'm not doing it because I think you will like it I'm just this is the closest I can come to anything truly human you know which um, is what interests me in, in, in this life really it's not only my job it's also when I go to buy my groceries or I want to be a human being and I want to relate to the person next to me as a human being and I, I you know I hate when we are just playing these roles of like hello this is me and uh, this is me and I'm so cool and did you see my trousers huh? you know it's like uh, it's true it's really frustrating sometimes you know I want to wake everyone up and say hi are you all here yes okay if you don't want to be here you can go but you know um, and I think making yourself so vulnerable then makes it rel relatable and it, it becomes something else because it's true off the page she was very difficult and very and an asshole really most of the time and I remember so because I remember saying to Marie, I don't know how to go there. I'm, I can't do this really. I mean, I, of course I'm an asshole as well. But what I mean to say is I always, that's how I was raised. I always want to care about people. I want to help the person next to me. I want to be your friend. I want to be your friend. And she is so cold. So how would I get there, you know, staying cold? And because especially one of the ladies in waiting and there are all these wonderful, wonderful actresses. And one of them was already my friend. She's from Luxembourg. So I knew, you know, I can't be a friend now. I, I won't be able to, to go there. So in order to go there, I tried to stay alone and isolate myself a little bit um, during the making of the, of the film, but not after the shoot. I mean, in the evening we would have a glass of wine and that was very nice and very important. Um, but that's, I think, why, because I get the same reaction. People say, what do you mean? She's really nice and relatable. But it's true that in the beginning people thought, oh, you're telling the story of such a complicated character. Even I was afraid of her, um, you know. So... But I think that's also the the tension of the film because it's not it doesn't have a plot in it you know it doesn't have a classic plot so so you I, I think that you are it's just you're curious about what is she up to next because you never know she's unpredictable and Vicky is too as an actress and I think that just really came together in a very unique way and, and you let me I let her and I I, I, al I always think it's also um, casting is also finding someone I mean, in that case, it was absolutely clear that Vicky would play it, but normally I always try to find someone who is not like the classic cast for that role because that's boring. So when you're writing 
to be to be very to, to t say it in a very simple way, if you're writing a cold character and you're choosing a very warm person, it will do something and and the other way around. So I try to do that. That's very simply put now, but that that always brings some tension because it's not what people expect, and and that's what yeah helps helps to keep it interesting. I think. You've spoken in interviews um, a bit about the, the production process, the shoot itself, which you alluded to. And um, uh, Vicky, in one interview, you, you described it as, as uh, being sort of a very, um, having a very feminine or tender quality to this set. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, um, th you've alluded to the, the incredible challenges specific to playing this character. You were corseted. You were immersed in the mind of a woman who is um, has a lot of anger, a lot of sadness, a lot of insecurities. Um, and so I just wondered if you could each speak about um, how you approached that sort of challenge of creating a set where that kind of work could be done. Um, I. I I don't know. I mean, I don't. I don't really think about how I create that because that's just who I am and how I want to work with people. Um, and it was new. A lot of things were new to me because this this had, this was my first big co-production and it was a bigger crew. And I had there were new people in the crew, people I hadn't worked with before, and a lot of things that were new to me as well. And what I always do is that I go, I really go day by day. I'm, I'm just very much in the moment. I think that's the only way you can do this job. I mean, I can do this job and be there with these people right now and creating a moment now. We're like it's, It feels like collecting moments. It's not like I'm thinking about the entire thing all the time because I wouldn't be able to do it. I can't control it all. So I'm just trying to be where I am now and trying to make it a good moment for not only in front of the camera, but also for everyone. And um, sometimes I think I lose, I, I, I spend too much energy on this. But on the other hand, I think it's, it's important that everybody feels seen and valued for their work and that people really like to go there. And, uh, and they are all, you know, really all these people who you see in the, in, in, the, in the titles in the end, they are all so proud of what we did. Mm. And I always love it when I meet them again. And it's like the experience of shooting a film together and a project that is exhausting for everyone that's just that that really key, that brings uh, that brings a kind of relationship that you will never really lose um and so i try to yeah i, I try to have an atmosphere where, where everybody feels respected and and seen for what they do but that doesn't necessarily mean it's like cozy and funny all the time no. it isn't it's sometimes very hard and it no, was I, for both of us and for everyone in in their own you know positions yeah. No, I was about to say, you create a very special atmosphere that I really uh, admire, I mean, worship, because it's something, maybe because you're a woman, I mean, I sometimes refer to it as a feminine energy, you know, but um, it's, uh, no one shouts, y you do make that a rule, like, there's a first ID, but this person is not shouting at anyone, at any time, Um that's a big thing. At the same time, it's not like we're chilling out and having fun, like at all. It's <laughs> we're hardworking. You are hardworking many hours of a day, and you're very concentrated. And I'm very concentrated. I think we both share that. When we work, we work. When we play, we play. So when we go to work, we work. But also, I play when I work, so <laughs> it doesn't really make sense. But I'm serious at my play. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I definitely want to leave time for audience questions, but before I do, I just I, I'm so curious about your approach to uh, the period and and the the sort of um, period specific story that you're telling that is both in 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 very rigorous ways um, feels very um, historically immersive, but also has these moments of connection to a more contemporary viewer. Um, some of which are more explicit than others. Um, how did you think about that? Mm, I mean, I, I never wanted to make a traditional period film, and 
I also think it's not possible with a European budget. So we, it was, no, that's true. <laughs> the, the period films we refer to are all big budget productions and that's just, it's a very big, big budget for Europe, but not in, in terms of, not in American terms. So it, it's, you yeah. uh, we had to find our own way anyway. And I, I, I also wanted to. Um, and when we, I, there were also already more modern elements in the script, like the music was already in the script and the filmmaker and, and stuff that was not really, I, I already played with, with time when writing the script, but it was not that obvious. And when we started working on the production design and costume design and, and also the lightning, because we used a lot of lightning, which was not, the first impulse of, of all my collaborators was to do it right. And they all did their jobs well and their research and they came to, to show me what would have been the original furniture or clothing and everything. And my DOP said, yeah, the candles. And I said, no, 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 no candles. And she, she said, what, what do you mean no candles? And I said, no, I don't like candles. They're too romantic. That's not a romantic film. They did have electricity, so let's use lamps. And that was only the beginning. And then, and then I didn't like the original style of the furniture. And, the, and so I just pushed it more and more to like, not now, but later, because I wanted everything to be more simple. I, I liked it to be darker and more melancholy, and I didn't want all that decorated, silky, beautiful, what, would, what you would expect. Um, and then at some point they realized we're not doing that classic thing. And then they all started to play. And that was really a very beautiful process. We really went, it, as we as we went along, we created that style um, really day by day, and um, I think it was fun for everyone and really playful for everyone to do that and to to go for something new, which our, without us really knowing where we would go, it was really like uh, at some point my first city, who was who was German and very focused and quiet and dry, said to me, "I don't know what you're doing here." what kind of film we're doing here, but I'm going with you. <laughs> and it was really, sometimes I would do something and, and make one decision and everybody would look at me like, are you sure? And and then, but then some at some point they would all become open to like having other ideas. And it was not so much to, um, sometimes now people say to me, it's it's like it's connecting to, to um, to the present and like to the modern life, and I, I said that that was not what I, what we thought about. It's really also about questioning history, because what we think we know about history we know through other films mostly. So it's not really like we know how it really looked. We just think we know it, and um, I was questioning that all the time. And so we were also doing this in in the visual um, translation. Well, I think we have time for just uh, a couple of questions. I see one hand right there. Uh, there's a mic coming, so there you go. Yeah, thank you. Uh, first, I want to ask, um, were the clips of she making uh, the like shot movies, are those um, what really happened in history, or is it just, uh, is it an imagination, or... Uh, and if it is uh, imagination, um, like what's your thoughts behind uh, of designing these things and how these contribute to the personality of this character? Also curious about the use of kind of modern music in this film. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I mean, the idea was not that it was her imagination. It's true in the story that she meets the filmmaker, but in real life this wouldn't have happened because it was later, a film was um, discovered later, but the guy really existed, uh, Louis Le Prince, and I read about him and I was like, I studied film, I had film history lessons, I had never heard about him, and he was before the famous Brothers Lumiere, so I was really curious why, and and I thought it, he just deserved, you know, more, more of a stage, maybe, um, and that, that was what I frequently did when writing the script, using stuff that happened like five years later or 10 years later, and some people know, some don't, it doesn't matter. And, and I just wanted to bring him to, we had, actually in the other film we did together, we also had a film in film thre thread, because Vicky in the other film we did together plays a director 
who is doing a documentary on 16 millimeters. And so these, these images are seen throughout the film. And I always liked that in films. And maybe that's why it, why it happened. And I thought it was just a, a possibility for the character to, to recreate or to create her, to be part of creating another image of herself. Because for me, her antagonist was never the emperor or anyone else. It was her own image, which was so much bigger than herself. And which she always had to live up to. And so these scenes for me were like creating another image of her or at least seeing the opportunity of another image. And also when we were shooting it, we had spent so many weeks in cold castles and then we came to the countryside and it was like the first day of spring and we were all happy and we were shooting outside. And it was really also the atmosphere of that moment. And not everything that happens in these shots was written down. It was Vicky playing, you know? So it was really a new image of what we had already seen of her. And the modern music was already in the script just because very, I mean, all of my music choices are always just emotional. I cannot really explain them. I listen to a lot of music when I'm writing and sometimes songs would like slip into the script and then they would be in there and that doesn't necessarily mean they will be used in the film but in this case most of them were really used but of course because it was a period film script everybody asked me about the music is are you serious are you going to use modern music how are you going to do this and so i came up with the idea of having interpretations uh, with instruments that would have existed at that time so that at least you could just like the other modern elements you could like wonder, did this exist? Is this possible? Um, maybe they, maybe, they, maybe the, the, the song was there before <laughs> the Rolling Stones existed. <laughs> so that's why where we had the other interpretation. So the idea was to use modern music, but only played by instruments which already existed in the 19th century. I can take just one more question. I see one hand right here, and here's a mic coming for you. Hi, this is uh, actually the second time I've seen this, and I really enjoy it. And uh, uh, but and you, you've already talked about something I, I, I wanted to ask about, which you know is, is the is the the really great anachronistic details that that turn up that in a way almost don't feel anachronistic. It's like it's like the tractor, you know, for God's sakes. Nobody's going to think, oh, was there really a tractor back then? But but. The, th the thing is and I just I felt it this time particularly, is that didn't really break the feel of the movie. It didn't, you know, it, it didn't take me out of the movie. It was just... It did or it didn't? It didn't. It didn't. It's like, oh, there's a tractor. Well, they didn't have tractors, but that's cool. <laughs> uh, but uh, so all, all that, all I think is great. And I was just, you know, trying to, I, I, before it started, my wife, who hadn't seen the film before, I said, help me keep track of all the little sort of you know, period dissonances, dissonances and whatnot. But uh, one other thing that just occurred to me while, while, while watching this was that, uh, uh, is that I get kind of a woman, you know, a woman under the influence kind of vibe from, from, from Vicky's character in a way. It just, it just sort of, and I have not seen that movie for many, many years, but it just sort of felt like there was some kind of, some kind of thing. But uh, anyway, thank, thanks very much. Thank you. Uh, I didn't think about the woman under the influence, but of course, I adore this film. It's funny, and I don't know I what Vicky says. I get this for other movies. <laughs> Maybe it's my face, I don't know. <laughs> A face under the influence. <laughs> That's really funny. <laughs> but you know, to the tractor, you know what I think? My little sideline opinion, listening the questions and the answers and the questions and the answers. I think it talks to her great talent of filmmaking because filmmaking is telling a story and I think what happens is that the way it's told and the way it's shot, the tractor is used for the sole reason to make us know that they're waiting. And that's why you don't pick up on a tractor because we are waiting. It's, uh, you know, the scene is about oh, waiting for the train. So. That's what's so genius, I think, about Marie, is that she goes so intuitively about things and so organically about things, you forget about the actual thing. Yeah. Well, unfortunately, that's all we, the time we have, but I hope that everyone will join us for uh, a glass of something. Yeah. Thank you so much.
so much. Thank you. Thank you.